Hey friends, it's Pepper Spray Patty on day five of the 30 day self defense challenge. And here's the thing, we're kind of getting to that point where <laughs> you're not out and about as much um, and your alertness level may already be, you know, pretty high and you're like, okay, so I'm practicing paying attention and I'm actually right now limiting the amount of time that I go out because of everything that's happening and making sure that I don't get sick or the people around me don't get sick. So how do I practice when I am completely by myself? How can I practice self-defense every day? There's only, you know, so much that you can do without you know, needing to practice that physical defense part, which is very important. And I know it's not something that I talk about a ton, but that's because self-defense is 90% mental and 10% physical that I think that we put too much emphasis on the physical stuff and not enough on the mindset and the mental stuff. And so I have a great solution on how one, you can practice uh, when you're completely by yourself, <laughs> isolated, at home, you can still practice physical defense and it will also help continue to help you with your mindset. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce all of you that have never met him yet. I'd like to introduce you to, da -da -da -da! this is Bad Guy Bill. Now, a little up close, Look at Bad Guy Bill. He is actually a garbage bag. I created this great big huge <laughs> beat up dummy with a garbage bag and all of that filling and stuff, the bubble wrap stuff that comes in all the Amazon packages. <laughs> um, there's newspaper, um, like I said, bubble wrap, anything that, you know, if you've got a whole bunch of those plastic bags you want to get rid of, whatever, stuff your garbage bag, and then I encourage you to put a t-shirt on your bad guy. And here's where the mindset part comes in. And the reason we put a t-shirt on is because this makes it more real. Because you have to... You have to train the mind to be able to allow you to hit another person because for so many of us, that's probably the biggest challenge that'll hold us back from physically, from physically being able to defend ourselves and physically hurting our attacker is that we've spent most of our lives telling ourselves, telling our mind that it's not okay to hit another person but there is a time when it is and so we need to to train our brain for that and a part of that is having that visual if you uh, get instruction on firearms um, if you go to a firearms instructor and they're training you one of the things that they talk about is at a certain point you go from the round targets to the human silhouette target and the reason for that is because you need to be mentally prepared that you're going, that if you have to use a firearm for defense, that you're going to have to point it at another human being. And you may have to pull the trigger on another human being. And you may have to shoot another human being. And you may have to injure that human being. Well, it's the same thing without a firearm. Regardless of, you know, some physical some physical defense situations you are going to have an ability to get away without it becoming where you have to uh, physically defend yourself but realistically you're going to have to do something that is going to require you to do some form of physical defense and you can choose to either do it well which is the way that I'm teaching it, um, and that is that you will have to injure the person to get away, or you can hope that you're a good fighter and you have enough endurance to have a back and forth. But I'll tell you what, I don't have the strength, I don't have the endurance, and I don't have the time 
to spend any more of that time than is necessary if I have to physically defend myself. So I want to make sure that whatever I do, it's one, two, three, boom, they're down and I'm out of there. Think about that, okay? And so we got our bad guy build here and I'm going to move them back just a little bit because it makes it a little easier to practice. So how do you practice self-defense? using your bad guy bill. You just got your garbage bag, you filled it up, you put a t-shirt on it, you're all ready to go. So now what do you do? Well, let's go back to how do you physically defend yourself? Hard to soft. So let's practice the hard to soft. You know, think about those different areas on the body. So if this is the, the throat area. I may practice my elbows and the throat. And you know, if you need a mirror, use it. Otherwise not. Um, you know, one of the things you could do is uh, put them on a chair or, you know, some some kind of a, a prop so that he's higher up. Um, now, today I have him on a chair <laughs> with wheels, uh, which I did intentionally. Um, but sometimes there may be, you know, a spot where um, he's up against the wall and he doesn't have the ability to move. You know, you have that kind of control where you can, you know, put them in a, a mobile spot, um, like a, the desk chair that I'm using here, or put them somewhere where it's going to be completely mobile, and practice those strikes. Practice elbowing that body and see, you know, use both sides. This is a great opportunity to figure out where your strengths and where your weaknesses are by doing, you know, some basic movements like this, you know, practicing that, that palm strike. And I know this is going to move up here a little bit so you can see this just a little bit better. Let go! Let go! Let go! Three strikes to the throat. That's all I want to, <laughs> that's all I want to have to do. So that's why I'm looking at this person. I'm in my stance. I've got my hand, my hands up, the striking at it. Maybe I'm picturing um, their nose where I'm smashing their nose into the face, you know, or the throat or the chest, you know, something like that. I can turn around with an elbow, you know, practice a punch to the groin. Practice using whatever you have that's hard to whatever bad guy Bill has that's soft. Another thing that you can do, a little bonus, is to go get your coupon. Go get your striking tool. Um, if you get an up-close look at Bad Guy Bill, you will notice that he has holes all over his shirt, little puncture holes. Um, he's actually probably on his third garbage bag at this point because we love to practice the coupon. You know, so practice holding it in your hands different ways and giving them some good jabs, maybe practice this way, you know, and, and see, see how it feels. Now, switch to the, you know, the other hand, your, your non-dominant hand. You know, what I notice is when I have my kubaton on my keys and I just have my kubaton on hand, my keys are flying around and they hit me on hand, on my hand. So what does that tell me? That tells me that I need to, you know, find a way to hold the kubaton so that I have a little bit better control of my keys and they're not whacking me in the hand. Because again, you don't want to hurt yourself <laughs> in the process of hurting your attacker. So this is where we work out your own individual kinks. Um, I may decide that I'm going to, you know, not carry my kubaton completely attached to my keys. Maybe I'll put it on a carabiner or something like that. How is that? <laughs> um, Jamie just asked a question on Facebook Live. Um, so I'm going to answer it really quick. <laughs> How is that baton spelled? So there are a couple <laughs> uh, spellings, uh, but I always spell it K U B A T A N, Kubaton. Um, I do have some for sale in my store. Just put that out there. Um, and of course, the link is on all my pages for that. Um, otherwise, there are tons of different options for this out there. Now, somebody brought up at one point, you know, it always comes up, well, you know, I just take my keys and I put them between my fingers. Well, I want you to look at that. And I want you to think about that for a moment. This is a pretty small piece of your keys that you need to have good aim with. So 
you can't just take this and jab somebody in the belly. It may hurt, but is it going to injure them enough that you're going to be able to get away? I mean, I mean, get away without having to worry about this person following you. That's the goal, right? So is this going to be enough? If you're going to hit somebody and strike them in the eyes with something like this, you have to have good aim. Now, we already know there's a really good chance that as I'm striking at the person that they may move or I may miss because I'm not a pro. <laughs> I practice so that I hopefully don't. But realistically, it could happen, right? So even though this is an option, if you don't have any other option, give yourself a better option. I'm going to hold this in my hand. And let's say I've got my, my pepper spray in my hand and I drop it and I got my Kubaton. Whether I'm going for the groin, if someone's got me in a beer hold and I'm going for, a, for the groin, I can get I, I can get enough of this pointy thing into where I need to, right? Or if I'm jabbing or if somebody grabs at me and I'm jabbing at just think about what are the best options for you. That's what works best for me. This is what I love. Um, and I always pair it uh, with my pepper spray. So practice with your bad guy, Bill, especially if you're stuck at home <laughs> alone, need something to do. Whatever you do, practice something every day. And I challenge you to take the 30 day self-defense challenge. Also, have a safe day, guys, and I will see you soon.